Hello everyone, today we will get acquainted with a mystery case that requires very, very strong nerves and which will be assessed very ambiguously. Unfortunately, this story is based on real events. It's up to you to draw your own conclusions, but let's get straight to the point. The story of Dear Lacey. Lacey Allen Fletcher was born on November 25, 1985 to Clay and Sheila Fletcher. The girl was the only child in a family living in a small village, Louisiana. This village had no more than 1,000 inhabitants, and its name translates as slaughter, which is very suitable for the theme of today's story. When the girl was about nine years old, she moved with her parents to live in a new house located in a good residential area on Slater Street. This street ended in a dead end with large houses and beautiful front gardens. From the outside, it seems that the world there is much more beautiful and life should be happier than in another place. The Fletcher family looked like a typical middle-class family. Lacey's mother, Sheila, worked as a court clerk. Her duties included responsibility for all administrative procedures in the court, in Baker, and the father worked in a non-profit organization. The family was devout and attended church every Sunday. Lacey attended Baptist Academy and played on the volleyball team there. Neighbors said that Lacey was no different from ordinary children. She was cheerful, active, and loved to communicate with other children. She looked like a petite, well-built girl who loved to play sports in the garden or run around the street. However, when she was 14 years old, her parents took the girl out of school and from then on, she was homeschooled. By that time, Lacey began to show signs of Asperger's syndrome, although invisible to the uninitiated person. Asperger's syndrome is an authentic disorder that is most often accompanied by impaired empathy, lack of social competence, and often unusual interests. The development of the victim's intellect is almost the same as that of a healthy person, and therefore, it is not entirely clear why Lacey was taken out of school and sent to homeschooling. The parents did not publicly make any specific statements about this. Perhaps it was somehow related to Asperger's syndrome and social disorders, but neither the neighbors nor the children noticed anything unusual in Lacey's behavior. A friend and classmate of Lacey's later said that they became immediate friends when Lacey was at school and described the girl as a very close and dear person. She mentioned that Lacey was often reserved and shy, but at the same time could clearly express her opinion on a given occasion. After Lacey stopped going to school at age 14, communication between her friends was severed and her classmate heard almost nothing about Lacey again. And once, although she doesn't remember from whom, a friend heard that Lacey regularly visited a psychologist as a teenager, which was a little unusual at that time, and in most cases, the visit to a psychologist was for serious reasons. A Fletcher family neighbor named Robert said in 2022 that he saw Lacey about 15 years ago when she was in her early 20s. At that time, the grown girl sometimes hung out with his younger brother since their houses were next door. And even then, Robert noticed that she was not like people of her age. She simply had other interests. While other girls went to parties, drank alcohol, or were interested in boys, Lacey preferred to watch Disney movies alone. In general, after 14 years, the girl grew up and seemed more and more withdrawn. She went out less and less, did not go to school, and she had almost no friends left. After Lacey actually stopped communicating with this neighbor, Robert's brother, and was nowhere to be seen, everyone decided that most likely either the family had moved somewhere else, or Lacey had been sent to study elsewhere, but this was not the case. And if someone knew that Lacey had been living in her parents' house all these years, it would have been possible to save her. In May 2017, Robert met with Lacey's father and decided to inquire about the fate of the girl, wanting to know how she was doing. Moved to where? And how was her life going? Where does she study? But Lacey's father replied that she was fine and still living at home and then quickly changed the subject. All this even then seemed strange to the neighbor because at that time, the girl should have already been a little over 30 and living next door, even without delving into someone else's life, there is still the opportunity to see how those who live nearby take out the trash, arrive or leave somewhere. However, in all the years no one had seen Lacey, 
and also this strange departure of his father from the conversation and the neighbor's suspicions remained with him. January 2022 at 2.30 a.m., the local police station received a call from Lacey's mother, Sheila Fletcher, who sounded distressed and reported that her daughter had stopped breathing. Police and paramedics immediately headed to the house while notifying the city coroner. When the authorities entered the house, they smelled a disgusting smell. It was the smell of rot and feces, and breathing this air in the house was simply unbearable. The coroner would later say that in his entire professional career, he had never smelled anything worse than this smell, and he was unable to eat properly for a week due to nausea. And this man had a nervous breakdown, although he worked as a doctor and coroner for 30 years. Over the years, he had seen various incidents and accidents, but what appeared before his eyes in the Fletcher house left him in shock and horror. The police sheriff was also completely confused by the picture he saw. In the house, in the spacious living room, there was a sofa on which Lacey was lying. At first glance, one could understand that she was about 36 years old, but she looked unkempt. That's at first glance. Upon closer examination, it turned out that Lacey weighed 43 kilograms. She was very emaciated. She was wearing only a t-shirt and it was pulled up above her chest. Her entire body was smeared with feces, even with waste found in her ears, nostrils, and mouth. There were bed sores all over her body that were festering and some were so deep that they reached the bones. Mostly, bed sores appear in those who are bedridden due to illness. Lacey's entire body was covered in brown spots and bed sores. Her buttocks were completely deformed and the skin was missing in places. Lacey was infected with insect larvae that ate into parts of her body, causing incredible suffering. The photos taken at that time never appeared in the media, on the internet, or anywhere else as they were simply terrible and could be traumatic for people. Even coroners and police officers who responded to the call by nature of their duties could not come to their senses for a long time from what they saw. However, there is a photo in the public domain of the sofa on which Lacey died. This piece of furniture was completely destroyed. It was rotten. And where Lacey lay with her buttocks, a huge hole appeared in which human remains, scraps of skin, pus, and feces were found. Even the wooden floor under the sofa was covered with all this and began to rot. During the autopsy, the coroner found remains of foam from the upholstery of the sofa in the girl's stomach. Apparently, she was so hungry that she began to eat the sofa. Lacey's cause of death is investigative, meaning that death was not due to a single cause, but rather a combination of many factors. Among them were bed sores that needed urgent treatment as well as bone inflammation and blood poisoning. When Lacey was found, her mother Sheila was sitting on the couch with her and crying and her father Clay looked completely emotionless. Investigators naturally had many questions. How could it happen that a person ended up in such a state? When did they start to neglect it? Why didn't the parents who lived in the house with Lacey do anything? And why was it allowed to go so far? Initially, the girl's parents did not want to publicly comment on this. Later, the mother testified that Lacey moved further and further away from them. And when she turned 20, at some point, she did not want to leave the house at all. She had no interests. At some point, Lacey refused to get off the couch, after which her parents consulted a doctor. But it was the doctor they went to for consultations without Lacey, since she refused to leave the house. This doctor advised taking the girl to the hospital, but Lacey did not want to go anywhere and it seemed that the parents did not know what to do next. Her condition worsened, and at some point Lacey didn't even get up to go to the bathroom. She began to relieve herself on a towel that her mother put near the sofa, and sometimes it just happened in bed, and the girl lay silently and distantly on the ruined linen. The mother further said that she constantly brought her daughter food and also gave her drinks and tried to care for her wounds, which arose from the fact that the girl was always lying on the sofa. Lacey never complained of pain and was sane until the very end. When Lacey suddenly stopped breathing, her mother called 911, but it was too late. There were rumors that a neighbor forced the parents to make a call, who saw Lacey lying on the sofa through the window and realized that something was wrong and he told the girl's mother, choose, and if she doesn't inform the police, then he will do it himself. 
But subsequently, the police did not confirm laugh about this information. But, as you know, rumors do not appear out of nowhere. Later, it became known that the girl's parents were not at home for almost two days before her death. And during these days, their daughter remained hungry. Of course, maybe the mother put some food on the sofa, but still no one cared about her these days. The question arises, why didn't Lacey get up from the couch and get herself something to eat because she was in her right mind? Some sources suggest that the girl suffered from locked-in syndrome. The person is fully conscious but physically almost completely paralyzed, and the cause is brain damage, among other things. In total, Lacey lived exclusively on this couch for over 12 years without getting up. In court, members of the jury required medical assistance to somehow understand the photographs of Lacey's body. When these photos were shown, there was complete silence in the courtroom. Everyone present was simply in shock and could not believe what they saw. On May 2, 2022, Clay and Sheila Fletcher were charged with second-degree murder and were initially sent to the East Felicia Jail. The parents repeatedly asserted that they were not to blame and emphasized that their daughter Lacey was sane to the end and could make her own decisions. On May 4th, the Fletchers were released on $300,000 bail, and the trial did not end there. They were tried in February 2023. But how impossible it is to imagine that the parents left their daughter to decompose alive on the sofa. Doing nothing or taking any action, they even watched TV in the evenings in the same room. This is unimaginable since the smell of feces and rot throughout the house was simply unbearable. And yet the parents also lived there, leading a normal life. Lacey's life was abnormal and her parents continued to act as if nothing had happened. And people familiar with this story still wonder how this could happen. And wasn't this an insidious process that lasted 12 years, with Lacey left lying on the couch and her condition slowly deteriorating more and more? Of course, her bed sores did not appear yesterday or today, but over a long period of time. It is impossible to imagine that someone's child will declare that he will no longer go to the bathroom, to the toilet. How can you let it happen and brush it off? And even if Lacey was already an adult, there was still a way to place her in some institution, at a minimum where they could help her, albeit forcibly. Of course, this requires considerable financial investment, and it is hard to believe that Lacey's parents did not have the funds for such medical care. They had a regular job where they made good money and they had a large house in a good residential area. And it looks like they weren't deeply in debt as they quickly put up $300,000 as their deposit. It is hard to believe that the parents did not find funds for psychological help for their daughter. It appears that the girl received treatment in her early teens, but why and at what point did it stop? No one can tell what was going on in the minds of Lacey's parents or her own. But the fact is that a healthy person would not voluntarily spend his life on the sofa. This is somewhat clear. Something must have happened in the girl's head that made it difficult or impossible for her parents to reach her. Or maybe they just didn't want to deal with her. Lacey's parents were charged with manslaughter, but the charge was eventually reduced to second-degree murder. Unfortunately, the verdict has not yet been made, and this makes it very tragic that the girl's parents simply continue to live an ordinary, normal life without admitting or feeling guilty of anything. Thank you for watching. I recommend watching other true crime stories. Click right now and also subscribe to my channel. See you soon.